All right, welcome back. In case you're just joining us, it's time for our conversation. My guest is joining me right now, Dr. Emmanuel Moyijesu. He is a chief a lecturer at the Federal College of Agriculture, Akura Dats in Ondo State. He's also an agroeconomist and an agribusiness expert. Welcome to the program, Doctor. Nice to join us today. Yes, good morning. Good morning. Uh, now, now, speak to me about Ondo State because I saw something on the news. You are in Akure. Uh, yes. Yes. So, speak to me about the security challenges there because I saw something in the news. Was it today? about uh, kidnappers in Ondo State, or the headsmen, rather. You know, those, mm -hmm. ju just speak to me about uh, the agriculture, uh, the security concerns in uh, Ondo State. Thank you. Uh, although in recent time, there were cases of kidnapping along Owo, Akure Road, along uh, Ishua, Akuno Road, the Akoko Asis, and then some pockets of the areas. But I know it's still under control. And the, the government too is taking proactive measure. Their security agents are after all those kidnappers. I know they are trying. And there is no cause much for alarm. Mm. How are the Amoteco guys uh, going about uh, fighting insecurity, especially in that area? Do you have an idea? Amoteco? Uh, I, yes. I think what they are doing is to work with the communities, I have better information on the locations of those kidnappers. I think they are inside the bush. They come on the road. And that is why they, there is need for mounting road checks along the roads. And then product, uh, I mean some spots where the security agents will stay. And above all, to government need the assistance of the traditional rulers. They need the assistance of the community leaders. They need the assistance of the farmers. They are living with them. They can get information. And then the Security Council of the state, they must be meeting frequently now, at least twice in a week, to assess the information. And above all, there is need for technology. There is need for satellite use to get the location of these people. Even we are at your own comfort, you can locate them through satellite technology. And so security is more of the technology now, computer based. So, but we know that all these things will be a thing of the past. And then you should know that it has a lot of effect on social or on cultural activities for the people. And then you will also know that on those states, be an agricultural state, these are not very good news coming from us. And then, but we know the government will intervene because the plant is able to start. And the farmer will want to go to the feed. And when they begin to hear this type of news, they will be discouraged. Now, so. let, let me start the, this uh, conversation on agriculture on what I said earlier in terms of how much advantage we have compared to the rest of the world in terms of crop production. Uh, we are the largest producer of beans. We are the largest producer of yam. We are the largest producer of cassava. I think we are uh, the seventh largest producer of pineapple. We are the third largest producer yes. of ginger. I can go on and on. The fourth largest producer of cocoa. Um, the fourth largest producer of palm oil. The second largest yes. producer of sorghum behind United States. Yes. But all this yes. largest producer, second largest, third largest, is seemingly not having any effect on even the lives of Nigerians, because we are talking about even food insecurity, food where yes. even some of this food where we produce, uh, which we produce the most, are still very expensive in the market. Yes. So explain to me why some of those things are happening. Thank you. You, you could collect that agriculture took a, a great center stage in the, in the 60s. In the West, you know, the cocoa was pronounced. He, he, he was the highest source of income through cocoa. The, the then Western region the government was able to build Liberty Stadium, the NTA, the first television station, even University of FIFA, now Obafemi Awolowo. So many giant strides. And why? Because agriculture was given a priority. Then you could see that a lot of dislocations came in. When the hoy came, we abandoned the structure.
Okay. Um, Prof, Prof, if you can hear me, just hold on a minute uh, because I lost your audio a bit for just a few seconds. So if you can hear me, uh, let, let's come back to you. Uh, doctor, can you hear me? Can you hear me, doctor? Okay, doctor says he can hear me, but I can't hear him. Okay, we can't hear you over here. Let's quickly take a break. And when we come back from the break, uh, please do send your comments, your opinions, as well as your questions regarding what we're discussing uh, today, the impact of COVID-19 on agriculture, and perhaps why we are first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, nine, tenth, in terms of crop production in Nigeria. And yet, we are not reaping so much from it. We'll be right back after this break to join us. Again. But the matter is so important that we felt that we need to address Mark um, on the efforts being made by the Central Bank of Nigeria to improve um, diaspora remittance inflows into Nigeria. Uh, members
Hello everyone, welcome to the program. It's Moneyline with Nancy. There is no other time than now that has been afforded us to reset the economy of Nigeria again. It is in difficult time that nations take decisions to build their country. Nancy, I, I think I would be remiss to say that look, the Nigerian economy is vulnerable. So we have to come up with strategies as governments. How do we deal with this issue of hunger? How do we get food into people's hands? Who is the subsidy favoring? There is no subsidy, it's zero. It's zero forever, Nancy. Subsidy has never benefited the ordinary Nigerian. It has continued to benefit only the elite. The aspiration for us is to make Nigeria a net exporter of petroleum products. You can join us on all our social media platforms. Uh, find us on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram. Go to YouTube now and subscribe. Moneyline with Nancy TV. Hello, YouTubers. Welcome to Moneyline with Nancy TV YouTube channel. This is where we provide you with instructive business directions, processes, and guidance to help you assess the right resources to fund your businesses to withstand every form of internal and external shock. You will find here awesome informative videos on business, entrepreneurship, and lifestyle just to help you make informed business and financial decisions. Punch the subscribe button and let us drive you through the world of business. Please follow all our social media platforms on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, on LinkedIn, and follow us for latest updates on our website. All right, welcome back. Uh, we had uh, network issues, uh, but doctor is still uh, with me. Dr. Emmanuel Monijesu is still with me, the chief lecturer at the Federal uh, University of Agriculture uh, in Akure. All right, uh, doctor, can you, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, this is one of the side effects of technology. But uh, doctor... Doctor, please, can you land on some of the things you were saying earlier before I lost uh, the audio? 
okay, you you are asking me about our comparative advantage. We are first in in uh, fourth in cocoa production, oil palm, and you are asking that in spite of all this, that why should we be lacking in food sufficiency? I, I said there are a lot of factors responsible for them. Number one, we did not regard a grid as a business. Then, secondly, over the years, because of the oil boom, we left developmental progress uh, programs in agriculture. And the uh, people, there were a lot of rural over migration. Most of the rural areas were not developed. Then, the marketing board, the marketing channel, the marketing board of those states, trapped. So, and all this led to marry the problem. And then, coupled with the problem that the, the, the society, Nigerian society, we regarded those who are doing agriculture as second class people. Those who are reading medicine, we have prepared those who read law, and they've forgotten that those who read medicine and law, if they do not eat, a, a doctor can give a wrong prescription. If he doesn't eat well, he yeah, can misquote law. So everything borders on agriculture. And mm. uh, that was exactly the proper value chain. We only concentrate on minimal production. There were no processing. There were no packaging. There were no marketing. And then most of most of most of those brands of of, of, of our of, of our crops is okay. Were not really acceptable because we did not follow the normal standard. Then technology wise, producing early maturing type. There's a lot of funding, funding that's supposed to be given to the research institute. The colleges of agriculture, the uh, the universities, they are not just enough. We need to build laboratories. So all these things culminated into where we are today. Uh, but there is still a way out. The comparative advantage mm -hmm. is still there. Now that the government is focusing agriculture to grow the economy, so there is need for a paradigm shift into all the necessary things we should do. So that's the problem. You know, I like the fact that you brought in the aspect that if the lawyers and the doctors do not eat, the lawyer will not quote yes. the law well. The doctor would perhaps misdiagnose and, uh, you know, yes. uh, administer a drug that is not supposed to be for a disease for another one. Um, what do you say? Yes. So if, it, if we take a look at the impact of COVID-19 on agriculture, doctor, what would you say has really been the impact on one okay. side and the response of government to the impact of COVID-19 on agriculture in Nigeria. Thanks so much. You see, the impact has been tremendous. You know, when the disease broke out last year and started spreading all over the country, and the government in the Western region, in Africa, and that was a, a lockdown. You know, formerly that was the border closed. So the lockdown did a lot of, a lot of problems that came Doctor, are you still there? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. You... Yes, I can hear you now. Okay. The farmer, 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 the because of the because of the lockdown restriction. Then, Access to inputs, people could not get it because there was a lockdown. Most of the offices were no, and the ones that were open, they were not really much of the transaction. And then you could see that technologically in terms of computer transactions, we are not yet up there. Then you discover that in, in the market closed down, and you should know that that one will affect the prices of, of food items. Then schools were closed down. The school the feeding program for, for those who are to supply all those things is disrupted. So it has a lot of packs further effect. And then the major one is that there is a cut, a, a short supply in the food food supply, and uh, that will lead to high prices. Hmm. Uh, doctor, would you say that farmers uh, lost a lot of money during the lockdown and perhaps are still losing? a lot of money now. For, that's for farmers that even harvested. Yes. You see, the, 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 the lockdown disrupted farming activities. Like I said, 
even the essential service that's supposed to get don't get there. So we, we find out that the state and production affected the growth, affected and discovered that so the when the lockdown came down, the farmer went back to the field, they were able to salvage some things, but that's either was the lockdown. Um, okay, uh, Doctor, do you, what would you say, yes. um, the B part of my question, I don't think you seem to have answered it, which is government's response to COVID-19 impact and insecurity uh, in the country. Yes. Uh, food yes. inflation is still rising, about 19.23%. Yes. Headline inflation numbers came out from the NBS just a few days ago. Mm. Uh, headline inflation, 15.75 percent, yes. driven also by food prices and all of that. What do you think has been uh, has been government response to uh, agriculture in Nigeria, especially around the impact of COVID-19? And when I mean government, I don't just mean the federal government. Gov federal government is doing its part. How about in states, perhaps in those states where you are right now, yes. what has yes. been the response uh, to yes. uh, the development of agriculture amid covid Yes, thank you. You see, it's unfortunately that this problem is coming up. You see, when you look at agriculture, agriculture is on the concurrent list of the Constitution. It's the function of the federal state and the local government. The local government. The federal government is much in agriculture. State, if you are looking at agriculture, three to four percent. Um, doc Doctor, I'm afraid we just have to take another break. I really don't know what is happening this morning. Even the phones are not connecting well. Uh, uh -uh. <laughs> we, the phone? Yes, we are not hearing you very well. It seems to be uh, breaking. Can you hear me now? I'm hearing you. I'm hearing you. Yes, I know uh, you can hear me, but the connection from your end is breaking. Okay, I asked you the question about government response. Try to answer that again. Okay, I said the government response is this. Is that I said agriculture is on the component institution. It's the function of the state and local government. And uh, you could see that the, on the part of the local government in Nigeria, that for agriculture from there. And then you also discover that the state, the budget allocation of three, is no more than 30%. Even the federal all right, doctor, um, let's quickly take a break. When we come back, let's try and reconnect to you again. The network from your end is not too good. Let's quickly take a break. We'll be right back.
All right, doctor, uh, welcome again. Uh, just before we went on the break, I was asking you the level of response of uh, government across board towards uh, agricultural development in Nigeria amid uh, COVID-19. You were answering that, but the network was not friendly at all. So okay. you kindly please repeat some of your uh, thoughts. Now, I will start, you see, like I said, it, it, it starts from very low budget share allocation. And I said, and I said that agriculture is on the concurrent list. It's the function of federal, state, and local government. And you could see that even as much as the federal government is trying, particularly the local government is not doing much. They are rather than 774 local government. But in as much as that, but the intervention now, because of the COVID crisis, you could see that the government is bringing up a lot of financial assistance in the form of NICEA, NICEA the, the loan from the central bank. You could and a lot of youth are being brought in to go into agriculture. Then you could see that, as I read, as I read on, on the screen, about 300,000 uh, metric tons of grain are to be released. Then, but those ones are still just a measure. We must approach it very well. Number one, the government must look at access to inputs, fertilizers, the seed, the agrochemicals. So there must be more centers of it, both at the federal, at the state, and the local government, so that the farmers could have access to it. Then our schools, the school agriculture must come back alive. And then, so that our young ones in the secondary school and the primary school could at least through this food, so that that one will help. Then we must ensure, as a matter of fact, that the use of ICT, is being given prominence because a lot of transactions could go on ICT. Then you, on the part of the government, that is why they need to gather the stakeholders. And then you could see that there is need to open more land for agriculture. Not only that one, they need to build processing industries. There is need for more marketing outlets. So by the time we look at all these stages of the value chain, we will, have, we, will have, we will have media that will be exchanged. And there is not that the environment is not favorable, but we still lack some policies that mm. needed to be placed. And there is supposed to be a synergy between the federal government, the state, and local government on agriculture so that we can be what we wanted to be. And then you find that you mentioned a lot of crops, cocoa, oil palm, cotton. They are still, they are, they, the environment is still favorable to them. We just need to exploit the value chain. We just need to look at the opportunities so that we can get there. Mm. Hello. Yes, uh, Doctor, I'm with you. You, 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 yes. you are in the academic community, uh, Federal yes. University, Federal College of Agriculture, f for yes. that, uh, that in Accra. Where yes. is or uh, what is the role of research? Uh, in agricultural development, because it seems that we don't really hear so much about what you people are doing in agricultural uh, development and research, or perhaps you're doing a lot and we really do not know. Yes, and uh, let me bring it this up. In fact, recently there is a cassava, it's called Ritami cassava, it has carotene. And uh, on our own part, as an institution and a research center, what we did was that the, we have adopted villages around our schools in Akure. There is one in Ibule, Shoro, very, very close, about 15 meters away from the school. And then there, we gave them modern technology in poultry production, the community people. And they went to that one, we gave them cassava processing plants, and then they are also into fish ponds, the adopted villages. So what we are doing, we are disseminating information on that technology to them. Then we also have one at Owode. Owode is about three, is about one kilometer from the main school. What we did there into cassava process, if we get there a lot of adoptees of the technology of the vitamin A cassava, the technology in fishery, they are all there. And a lot of household families are engaged, they are involved. Then we have adopted schools. We have three schools. One of them is Aquinas College. We introduced it to them fish farming. 
Doctor, what, doctor, I, I, I am. Uh, we are pressed for time because we have to end this interview at least in less than two minutes. What I'm okay. asking is that you're telling me at least what your school perhaps is doing around your locality. I'm asking yes. perhaps is there a national spread of uh, yes. research? Yes. What we are doing, you see, our mandate, we are doing it at that local level. Then on our own part, then there are lots of research cities all over the country. How are we the research are institutes working with the Federal Ministry of Agriculture, for yes, example, and rural development? So they are, so it's a specific one. There is one in Tuba, a crop in Uwideke. There are some in the north. There is one in Ibadan, Koko Research. There is one IRT. There is one in Saria. All these research aggregates, the major issue is the linkage, the extension part of it. And uh, we know that with more extension services, the farmers are coming. Then mm. we also want to say that there is need for more funding of the agriculture. We have a lot of research findings on, on, on our shelf. But what we needed is to meet the industrialists. Okay. So that's why the, the private sectors must come in now. Okay. So I th can, uh, I th uh, doctor, s sorry to butt in, but I'm afraid we've got to end this show right now. But thank you very much for your thoughts and your, uh, you. Um, you know, your perspective uh, this morning. Thank you very yes. much for joining us. All right, I've been Thank speaking you. with Dr. Emmanuel Monijesu, Chief Lecturer of Federal College of Agriculture, Korea, that's the Undo State Capital. That's the much yes. we can take today. Thank you all for uh, sticking Thank around you. despite the network issues. But mm -hmm. please join us again tomorrow for another edition of the program. I am Nancy Naji, and don't forget to wear a mask. Be the best you can be too. Thank you for watching our video. Please hit the subscribe button below. Turn on post notification to follow all our updates.